I got involved in Central States Then Speech Association in 1967. Yeah. I had my first paper accepted, and uh, I got on a nice panel with a guy named uh, Bob Scott. Had done a little paper on rhetoric as epistemic as well yeah. on that panel. So he kind of ruled the field for ten years, but mm -hmm. at least I got my first paper in there. And uh, a guy named Joe Wenzel from University of Illinois was in the audience and said the journal really could use that paper. I said, wow. And uh, <laughs> so I sent it in. It got reviewed and got accepted. So I got my first referee publication uh, out of that, wow. that same, that's the next year and out of that uh, same trip. So I began Central States for me on very much on a high note. Oh, it, it, it was my cradle. It, it taught yeah. me essentially everything I needed to know to function professionally. Um, in um, 1974, I was put up for an Outstanding Young Teacher Award, important to me because I never got an Old Teacher Award. Uh, <laughs> so, and, and then I chaired that committee the next year, yeah. so I got my first professional committee work. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1976, the Vice President of, of Central State, Sharon Ratliff, moved to California, mm -hmm. and the Executive Committee, in its wisdom, said declared her office vacant, wouldn't let her hold it when she was out of the region. So we had an election where three people were up to fill two offices, right. and uh, the, the highest vote getter became the first vice president, and the second highest became the second, and I became the first. And so I immediately rolled into convention planning right. uh, without warming up. My relationship continued after my vice presidential mm -hmm. year, slammed into that. I then got to hang around and become a president, and then it became, I guess, my job, I saw my job as is trying to develop the organization in in not not only uh, built built around pedagogy and, and basic kinds of which, but in, toward, toward more specialized things. Mm -hmm. So when I was president, we for example formed the women's caucus right. to, to get to get a social to get a social the social aspects of of, of persuasion and communication mm -hmm. studies uh, marked, and we also invented the Federation Prize that right. year, um, which is still the largest research grant given by any of the communication associations. Really? It is. It is. Um, Tell me about starting the Federation Prize. Why and how? And well, that, that, that actually, that was my proposal. Uh, mm -hmm. That to say we had developed a good, we had kind of re reformed thanks to Gus Friedrich uh, as an executive secretary and then flowing into Dave Berg's executive secretaryship, we built a good financial base. Mm -hmm. you got to understand most professional associations ran on the flow of dues. Right. They figured out how to build, start building reserves and what you could do because interest rate was going up then, mm -hmm. what we could begin to do with that. And as a matter of fact, because Central States was far and away the largest of the regional associations, mm -hmm. it, had, it had a good financial base. So we were able then to, to cut off at that time the unheard of amount of $4,000. Uh, to, to give a prize every year and really stuck it to everybody else. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to say, not only uh, no, are, are we handling the pedagogical aspect, are we fostering scholarship, but we are now fostering basic research. And we are becoming an instrument for professional development and everything else. This, I mean, the central states was you know, the, the great populist center of the country and mm -hmm. uh, interesting populist politics. And, uh, what, what's called Midwest civility and all those kinds. Right. There are all kinds of interesting things. That's where the big universities that pushed communication studies, you know, took root at, at Michigan and Illinois right. and Iowa and Wisconsin, Chicago. These places were, were big. Mm -hmm. Northwestern were big in that. Um, right. So, when in a sense, we had a regional identity, but not really as a professional association. Mm -hmm. We still were flyover country, you know, just for an awful lot of stuff. So you talked about kind of the identity of yeah. CSCA. How would you describe the the association's personality of of CSCA? What is when you think CSCA? Well, it, what do you think? It, it, it sees itself, I think, um, it's somewhat less true than it was, say, twenty to twenty five years ago. That it is the absolute center of the entire field, as mm -hmm. I was just saying. This right. is these were the were the major sites of graduate education, these mm -hmm. are the places where it exploded it out of the middle part mm -hmm. of the country. It's not as though it didn't develop in other places. Right. It finally took root in California very strongly. But it was fading out of the ivies, the mm -hmm. old, even the old chairs, chairs of rhetoric disappeared in the ivy universities. So it, it became the center of the field. Mm -hmm. And that's, say, less true now as we got stronger and stronger schools outside of, right. of, of that. But, you know, if you were to go to 
the rank departments in the in the 70s and 80s, it was a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. uh, you might let Texas onto the list, but not yeah. not many others. Not many else. You know, USC pushed up, and, mm -hmm. and the University of Washington keeps trying. But but it, it was still the, the same. We still turn out most of the PhDs in the mm -hmm. country come out of this region, and that identifies it as as the center of of uh, of communication studies.